We have a great new development here from the Quen team. They released QWQ. I don't know how to actually say it. This model is known as Quen with questions and it's their reasoning model. So I'm going to jump straight into the results here. And as you can see here on this chart, we have a few of the common benchmarks that are now being used to assess these reasoning models. So we have had a few reasoning models. The last one we did was from DeepSeek, their R1 Lite model. Other models in this genre of reasoning LLMs is going to be OpenAI O1 Mini, OpenAI O1 Preview. For some reason, they compare also with the GPT-40, Clutchy Profile Sonnet, but I would say those are not in the same class as these reasoning models. And so those are the ones that we're looking at for comparison. Now, if you look at this QWQ32 billion preview model, it's outperforming OpenAI O1 Mini with the exception of the live code bench benchmark. So you can see on GPQA, there is 60 here and QWQ performs 65.2. That's pretty impressive. And they have an example here of some math problems that you can use. The question is, where do you actually test it? So there is a demo. You can click on this demo and I will jump straight into that demo and start to test it on a few prompts that I've been using to test these reasoning models for different kinds of reasoning capabilities. So I have the QWQ32 billion preview model running here. And this is on Hugging Face Spaces. So it's part of Quen. You can see all the details here with this model and you have a few starter prompts. So the first one that I want to test, which a lot of these models struggle with, in fact, even the last DeepSeek reasoning model that was released struggle with this one. Let's see how this model performs on this particular math puzzle. I'm just going to paste the prompt here. There is a scenario where Peter has five candles that are all the same length. He lights them all at the same time. After a while, he blows out the candles one after the other, which of the five candles was the first one he has blown out, right? And there's some criteria here. This would be the answer, but most models actually respond with this. So I'm curious if this particular model is able to reason first about the question and not get confused because I see that these models actually get confused with this particular question. This is why I like to use this test. So I'm going to go and submit. So the first thing here that I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of text. I guess that's what they refer to as the reasoning process of this model. There's a lot going on here. And then it says the final answer is four. It was not able to do it. And I'm not surprised because a lot of these models struggle with this particular question. And it's often because it confuses the question. It makes a few assumptions about the scenario and it just doesn't get it correct. The answer again, it should be three because that was the first one that Peter should have blown out. All right, let's go to the next one. So I'm going to use one of their questions since that's what they put in their blog and just test it to see if it's consistent with the answer. Now, this is not a really difficult question, but I'm still curious how it does at this logical reasoning task. I'm going to submit it and you can see here it starts from scratch and then it does the different reasoning steps that it needs to do. So the first time I tried this one, it actually took a bit of time. So I'm just going to let it generate what it needs to generate to come up with the right answer. All right. So I actually had to pause the recording here because look at how long the reasoning is. I'm not going to go and assess the reasoning itself, but that's something that would be interesting to look at just to see if it's repeating things and where it's not being efficient. I'm just going to look at the answer here. So the final answer is this one here. And just by looking at their blog and the answer they have on their blog, this appears to be correct. Now, the first time I actually tried this one, it gave me a completely different answer, but the result was correct. So I'm pretty impressed by this one. And it shows their math benchmark that this is a pretty strong model, right? It compares with the O1 mini model and competes with the preview model. So that's a very strong result. You can keep testing with this. Maybe you modify it. That's something that you can try. So now I'm going to try a coding task. This is something that I've tried with the DeepSeek model and it completely failed. The O1 models from OpenAI actually get this one correct. And in fact, this particular prompt, I adopted it from the O1 guide. So I'm just going to use this. All right, here we go. So for this one, we are expecting that it can generate a bash script. So it's going to generate code and it should allow me to input this and it's going to output the transpose in the same format that I gave it. It takes a matrix represented as a string with this format and just prints the transpose in the similar format. All right, so we have the solution here. This one took way more time compared to the previous one. And you can see here the output, a lot of, lot of text. All right, so the end result should have been this code, this bash script that I can use 
and I can test. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to copy this one. So it's nice that it's neatly formatted like this. But something I didn't see here right away is the instructions for how to run this bash script. I'm not sure if this has to do with the instruction tuning part. It just gave me an answer, but I don't know if this is the best answer or most friendly answer. It definitely needs work on that. And what I'm looking at here is basically the entire steps. There's no separation between the the reasoning part and the response. Maybe that's something that's missing with this model and that needs to be taken care of because the solution is not really ideal. If you compare this with other models like DeepSeek reasoning model or O1, it's completely different. It gives you instruction for how to actually run this. But I know how to do this. I'm going to go and copy this and then try it in my terminal. So I'm in my terminal here. I've actually created the file already just to simplify things here for the video. And I'm going to go and actually edit it. And I'm going to paste this code, all right? So the code is there directly from what the model gave me. Now I'm going to exit this, all right? And then I can run this. All right, so this is the command to run it. And as you notice here, this is the input, right? This is the input that the script should be able to take and should be able to transpose. And it says bad delimiter, something like that. So we're getting an issue here. I'm not even going to try to fix it, but I'm going to show you here that I did the same test with another output that I got from O1. So I'm actually going to try that here. So this is the one that I got from O1. So that's the correct response. And I also have the one that I got from the DeepSeek reasoning model that recently came out. So I'm going to try that here and I'm going to show you what it actually outputted. It did give me an output, but it didn't give me the right answer. That's something to note, even though this seemed like a very simple task, the model wasn't really able to do it. And even for this one, it's worse because it gave me some error. Like I should have expected something that at least runs and work and then give me some answer, even though the answer might not be correct, just like what the DeepSeek model gave me. So it needs a bit more work on the coding. And I could see it in the benchmark results that it definitely needs more work on coding. So that is something that I expected. I'm going to go back to the model here. So the last one I want to test out here is one of my favorite tasks because it looks quite easy to do. And in fact, if you go to a math computational engine like Wolfram, you can easily just query it like this and it gives you the answer and it gives you the answer pretty quickly. Now I've tried using LLMs or especially these reasoning LLMs on this particular task. This is a much harder task compared to other like math related tasks. So this is why I like to try it. In fact, what it needs to do is it first needs to sum up the first 70 prime numbers. It needs to figure out what are the 70 prime numbers, then it needs to sum it, and then it needs to extract the four digits. It needs to know how to actually perform these different math operations. So I'm gonna go and submit this and then check out the answer. Now, the last time we did this with DeepSeek, it was quite interesting actually because of the way it divided the problem. It actually did the first 10 primes and the second 10 primes and the third set of primes and so on. This is the approach it used and it actually got the answer correct. And I was really impressed by that with the DeepSeek reasoning model. So I'm very curious how this model performs on this task. And you can see here, that's the strategy. Next 10 primes is doing the same strategy as the other one, next 10 primes, you can see there. That's pretty interesting that these models are performing this strategy and it makes a lot of sense because it actually simplifies the task. It simplifies how it should find a solution for this task that looks very easy, but it is actually challenging for these models. Well, that's great to see. Now I can see that it says the so, the sum of the first 70 primes is this number. This number, by the way, is correct. That is the sum of the first 70 primes. So well, that's correct. All right. So to extract the four last digits, that's the next step. So let's see what it does here. Okay, so it's gonna go over that. I'm not sure why it did this. And this is again, sometimes these reasoning models do these extra steps that we don't really need or it didn't need to do. So I think maybe there is a capability that's missing here. Something like reflecting on the reasoning that the model has produced already and being able to know, okay, I have something that looks like the almost the final answer and I just need to do one simple operation, which is extracting those digits. So this is not something I would expect as part of the solution. All right, so it says here, now the problem asks for the last four digits of the sum, which are these, okay? But it still hasn't given me a final answer. I think it's trying to verify. It's trying to verify the answer. And again, this is maybe part of the self-reflection part. I don't know if this model was explicitly trained for that. I read in the blog that something like that happened, but I cannot confirm that if I haven't seen the actual details of how this was trained. So he says, wait, still not matching my earlier sum. So now it's confused. Let's look at it a little bit more. 
towards the end. Okay, it got confused and then, okay, that's consistent. Then it did a few checks and then finally it got the answer here. It's pretty impressive that it got the right answer. It's very similar to DeepSeek, but I think the reasoning steps is just not efficient. Like I wouldn't use this on a production LLM application just because it does these unnecessary steps. Like it's trying to verify things, but it already have the answer. So maybe there is some capability that's missing, as I mentioned, that it can assess its reasoning as it goes producing those different steps. And I think that's the reason why it's important to maybe separate out the response from the reasoning steps. And that's something that O1 has done really well. DeepSeek also did that part too. But how often do you do that? You know, how can you make that more efficient? I think that's going to be a challenging part of building these reasoning LLMs and making them more production grade. For now, I think it's doing a lot of unnecessary steps and it's actually going to cost you a lot because it's producing tokens that it shouldn't be producing. Even though maybe it's justifying it by saying, oh, I need to verify this. I need to check for consistency and so on. I don't really care about that as a user. I just want the model to be able to, yes, use the reasoning capabilities because it's important for this task, but do it in a very efficient way. So that's something we need to figure out as a community. All right, those are some thoughts. Leave your comments below what you think about the results. I'm pretty impressed with this model. I was a little bit disappointed with the coding task. Maybe if I give it a simpler coding task. So I'm gonna put together a few different coding tasks for future reasoning models. But reasoning models is something that I'm covering a lot in this channel. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe so that you don't miss those updates. Consider leaving a like as well if you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.